This tonight is the meeting place of heaven and earth. For this tonight is the stable in which God keeps the appointment to meet us. Just like St. Mark's United is not a large cathedral, Bethlehem was not the hub of the universe, nor was the stable a platform for famous people. In an out-of-the-way place, which people n never thought to visit, there God sends his son. May the hope that forgives and renew be born in us tonight. May the peace that overcomes hatred be born in us tonight. May the joy that brings us healing be born in us this night. May the love that breathes humanity into all creatures be born in us this night. May hope, peace, joy, and love brought by the gift of Jesus through God be born in us this night.
Let us pray. Loving God, we gather virtually this evening to celebrate the birth of Jesus. We are excited about tomorrow and we are ready to welcome the baby Jesus into our world. We want to thank you for sending Jesus to show us how much you love us. Amen. And they all lived happily ever after. The end. That was a good one. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you in the morning. See you in the morning. Sleep tight. Okay. Wait a minute. Don't leave yet. Can you stay a little longer? Guys, what's going on? You guys need to sleep. But we're scared. That book made us nervous. And now we're thinking about all the things we're afraid of. Like what? Well, let's see. And, uh, there's airplanes, bees, coronavirus, dogs, um, lice, mice, nightmares, roller coasters, questions. Teasing worms, x-rays, and zoom. Did you just list your fears, like, in alphabetical order? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I guess so. I can relate. I feel afraid sometimes. So how can we feel better when we can't sleep, when we're scared? Well, nice stories can help sometimes, like this one. When I'm afraid or worrying, I try to remember that part of the story is that it's way bigger than myself. And God's story is full of people who were sometimes afraid. You know, I have time to tell you one more story. This part of God's story is during a time when many people were afraid of many things, just like us. It all begins in Nazareth, in a town called Galilee, with a woman named Mary. You're right, we haven't met before. Um, what kind of greeting is this? Good question. Yes. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you are going to have a baby boy, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High and his kingdom will last forever. How can this be? How is it going to happen? Well, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child that is born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Also, your relative Elizabeth is going to have a baby, even though the people thought it was impossible. But nothing's impossible with God. Was all of that a question? Oh, um... Well, are you asking me if I want to do this? I am here, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to this message. I need to see Elizabeth.
hey, Mary. Mary, I have something to tell you. You are so blessed among women, and the baby in your womb is also blessed. The moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Here, feel it. Elizabeth, I'm oh so bursting with good news. God took one good look at me, and look what happened. I'm the most blessed woman on earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. I'm talking about the God who knocked the powerful off their thrones and lifted up the lonely. So, um, can I stay with you for a few months? Hey, it's pregnant. How is that possible? We aren't married yet, and the law says that's not good. Not good at all. She claims that this child, the child that she carries, is actually God's child. My only option is to marry her and then divorce her quietly. That'll save my reputation, at least. But you'll just be disgraced. I don't know what to do, and I'm afraid. Oh no. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to get married. God's Holy Spirit has made Mary pregnant. She will have a child, and you will name him Jesus. I'm going to marry Mary. I'm going to marry Mary. I'm going to have a baby and name him Jesus. I'm going to be a dad. I need a pack. Hold on. I have a question. Why is Joseph packing a bag? And why was Joseph afraid about Mary having a baby? Also, do angels visit people in dreams? Why does Mary stay at Elizabeth's house? And why is everyone making such a big deal about this? It's just a baby. It's story so weird. It's just... Yeah, I, I don't know the answers to most of those questions. This is a bigger than life kind of story. And there are lots of unexplainable and miraculous things that happen. That sounds like what Reverend Peg says when someone asks a tough question. Good. I'm glad I sound like Reverend Peg because we just don't have all the answers. Now, I do know the answer to one of those questions. Why is Joseph packing? To understand that, we need to meet the emperor. Rome, it is I, your Lord and Savior, Good Shepherd, Light, Way, and Prince of Peace, Caesar Augustus. First, I want to say you're welcome for all the great things that I've done for you. There has never been as powerful and as glorious of an emperor as me. My empire is vast, you people are obedient, and I am saving you all, all of you, and you owe me so, so much. Citizens, I want to count you. Yes, let's get a good head count so that you can all pay me what I'm owed. Go to your hometown and register your family so that you can show proper appreciation of my awesomeness. I decree it to be so. Farewell, my faithful children. May you know my magnificent ways. Farewell. <laughs>
Okay, the good news is I found us a place to stay. Finally, this baby is not going to wait much longer. Where are we going to stay? Oh, did you get the get our room at the nice inn I like with a good breakfast? Um, not exactly. It was full. Oh no, what are we going to do? Sleep outside with the shepherd? Stay in a stable with the donkeys? Huh? Uh, no, who would do that? <laughs> Joseph, this baby's not going to is coming soon. I know, I know. The guest rooms are full, but I found an innkeeper who let us stay in a small space in his home. Oh, good. Yeah, it's a nice space. Lots of hay. Maybe a few animals. Okay, let's do this. Okay, stop there. Okay, what this time? I don't think I want to hear about the birth part. It's nothing we haven't talked about at the dinner table on multiple occasions. <laughs> but anyways, we can talk about that another time. The Bible really doesn't tell us anything about the birth anyways, even though I think that's the coolest part. It just says that Mary had a baby and then wrapped him in strips of cloth and put him in a feeding trough, of all things. That's it. Those are the important details to remember for the next part of our story. It takes place in a field. Okay, keep going. There were shepherds living outside in the fields, watching over their sheep. They were about to be frightened by some powerful messengers from God, but they soon realized they didn't actually have to be afraid. Glory to God in the highest. Uh huh. Is this thing even on or am I on mute? Are you people even listening? Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah the Lord. This will be the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. That's all. Goodbye. So you saw that, right? Uh, yes, 
I did. Bah. Yeah, that happened. Bah. Bah. Well, we're going, right? Yeah, I think, I think we should. We should go. Yes, yes, we're going. We have to. Do we bring the sheep? I think we have to. Bah. 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 We want to go. Take us with you. Bah. 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 What were those signs again? A baby wrapped in strips of cloth lying in a major. Ah, we won't forget. Let's go. You two sheep, come on. That was a miracle! It was exactly how the angel had described. The baby was wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Friends, we have seen something amazing tonight. But I don't know about you, but it feels like the world is changing. Yeah, but... Why do you think we got to see it? Nobody cares about us shepherds. We're poor, and we don't have very much power. I have no idea, but the baby's mother, Mary, Mary acted like this was exactly what was, the, was supposed to happen. Like, this was meant for people like us. Maybe this baby will lift up the world. And bring down the lofty. Wouldn't that be something? It sure would. I believe there is no limit to what this baby can do. Hey, sheep. Hey, shepherd. What's that stall there last night? I don't think I've ever seen that one before.
Those shepherds and sheep were really brave. Yeah, they were brave and determined. Everyone in the story was, I think. From the shepherd, from Mary and Joseph to the shepherds, they all recognized the birth of Jesus was going to change the world. Fiona, Audrey, Fiona, yeah. are you feeling safe and sleepy yet? Our story is coming to an end. Yes, we feel safe and sleepy, but this isn't really the end. No, why not? It's bedtime and we need to get some sleep. This is just the beginning. Jesus is born, he grows up, he changes, he heals, he, he changes water into wine, he teaches, he heals, he flips tables, he... Yeah, he does do a lot. You're right, Jesus' birth is just the beginning. And we have a lot to talk about, but it's late. Mm -hmm. Tonight, let's focus on the one special moment, this one night that brought us Jesus. Okay, that makes sense. This is a good story. God's story is unfolding more good news every day. And in the end, all things will be made right. That doesn't mean we, don't, we won't be afraid along the way, but we can trust the love and justice will have the final word. Speaking of the final word, Let's have a final word from Mary, the mother of Jesus. My soul magnifies the Lord, my, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For you, God, have looked with favor on the loneliness of your servants. For surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For you, the Mighty One, has done great things for me, and holy is your name. Your mercy is for those who fear God from generation to generation. You, O oh God, have shown strength with your arms. You have scattered the proud and thoughts of their hearts. You, God, have brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have helped your servants, Israel, in remembrance of your mercy, according to the promise you made to our ancestors, to Abraham and Sarah and their descendants forever.
Let us pray. It may seem naive in a world of grief to choose to live in joy. It may seem foolish in a world where solemnity is power to sing and dance to a different tune. It may seem cruel in a world of suffering and injustice to speak of light and celebration. But you have come, Jesus, to bring joy into our grief, light into our darkness, singing into our mourning, and it is an act of healing and proclamation to believe and embrace the joy you offer. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Hallelujah. Amen. Follow where the spirit of hope leads you and listen as the child of peace cries to you. Rejoice and the love of God embraces you and let go. And with hope, peace, and love in your hearts and the blessing of the Creator, Child, and Savior be with you always. Amen. It is a tradition here on Christmas Eve at St. Mark's to pass the light of Christ to one to the other during the singing of Silent Night. And so tonight I would ask that if you have a candle at home and you'd like to light it during this song and remember the meaning of the fact that we leave this place holding our light out into the world so that all the nations and all the peoples we meet may feel the warmth of God's love and the grace of God's peace through all our living, all our actions, and all our speaking to those we meet.